So as we dive in here, uh, one of the first things you'll see when you start using NX1926 uh, is that the blank geometry options have, have changed a little bit uh, if you use bounding block or bounding cylinder. Um, in the past, it was limited to um, an extra form of bounding block around your part, and you could offset in, in uh, you know, X, Y, or Z in a plus or minus direction. Uh, however, now, in uh, starting with 1926, the dialogues have changed a little bit that uh, we're able to modify not only the size, but also the position of our bounding blank. Uh, so this gives us a little bit more, more control. Uh, over our options, uh, and, a, and a, an additional option is that we can now create a uh, the blank as a piece of geometry. Uh, this really comes into play uh, if you one you want to use that that geometry. Uh, it'll actually be added as a component in your assembly. Uh, if you need to make any sort of little modifications to it or something like that, you can certainly do that. Um, additionally, if you're uh, exporting out geometry to uh, some simulation, you know, third-party type stuff. Uh, that that piece of geometry is is there now for you to be able to select. Um, so this avoids having to go through and create uh, blank files with cylinders or or rectangles or or something of that nature. Uh, so it really just kind of reduces some um, of your your prep time when you're making your programs. I'll jump into NX right now. Uh, just to show what that's going to look like. So here in NX1926, uh, this is the part I'll use for another demonstration later, uh, but just to show what the, the bounding options look like for our blank geometry, I'll go ahead and edit my workpiece. And you can see right now I, I don't have anything selected. So I'll go ahead and specify my part. And now when I go to specify my blank, uh, we can see from the pull down list uh, all the options here really look the same. Uh, the differences are just inside of bounding block and bounding cylinder options. So here we can see for bounding uh, bounding block uh, we now have the ability to change the size uh, and the position of our of our block. Um, orientation is is really just what is it uh, related to. Uh, typically, just leave that as MCS. Also here you can see we have a block that was created that has a, a length of 300, a width of 300, and a, and a Z height of, of 31.75 millimeters. So if I wanted to reset this, uh, or I'm sorry, if I wanted to change the, the height of this block, uh, maybe, maybe my raw material is, is 35 millimeters. I can put that in, and you see in this case it added the offset value to the bottom of, of my part. Uh, maybe I want to come and say I want to put this on the top of my part. Uh, so you can see I made that offset in the in the Z plus now, and it automatically changed this position of, of Z minus. So uh, maybe I want to split that that value a little bit. Uh, if I want to go ahead and put a, a one millimeter offset on the bottom, and X is doing the the math and, and figuring out okay, there's now two and a quarter uh, millimeters on top uh, in the Z plus direction and, and uh, one millimeter below the part. Uh, so it's pretty intelligent in, in how it can uh, come up with that information. At any time you're making these settings, you can always uh, reset, and it'll just go back directly to the, the bounding block that it finds originally uh, without any offset values. I'll show the same really is true of the bounding cylinder here. Uh, most likely you wouldn't be making this part out of a, out of a cylinder, but you certainly could come in and, and choose your uh, different diameter. Uh, here this NX found a, a diameter of uh, 424.264. You're not gonna purchase material that size. Uh, so maybe we'll say 450 millimeter material. And uh, you can all, again, change your, your height values here. You go to 35. <clears throat> and you can make your distance, um, your positioning distance offset uh, uh, however you would like here, uh, kind of along your, your center axis. It's not going to let you shift left or right, uh, forward or back. It's, uh, with the cylinder option, it's really just kind of splitting that distance. You see, that's what it did by default. It split the distance and, and left the same amount of material uh, on the top and, and bottom of this part. 
Uh, I think that's a, a pretty uh, standard behavior you would you would experience in the real world, uh, particularly in a, on a lathe or, or some turning machine. Okay, we'll jump back into our PowerPoint here and look at some of the next topics.